okay, so state, you know, state control, and even just not even control, like state, this is something that we all experience. And the state is a culmination of your current body behavior patterns, your current emotions, and the current thoughts that are running through your head. All that together allows you to perform in a certain way. I say allows you to perform because if you're in a depressed state, right, your body's kind of slumped over, you're feeling kind of tired, you've got painful thoughts, painful emotions, all of that will allow you to behave in a certain way. There's things you cannot do when you're depressed, and there are things that you're more likely to do when you're depressed. It's because the state allows such a thing to, to be birthed. And if you have a positive state, if you're, if you're thinking about hopeful thoughts about the future, if you're feeling excited for the day, if you're feeling curious and asking questions and all these things, that state allows you to behave in a different way. So the state really is a culmination of, of your body, your heart, and your mind. And that allows you to move in a certain way. Thank you. Um, can you explain or elaborate a little bit more about when you mentioned frame? Yeah, yeah. So the frame is the story. It's the metaphor. It's the frame is the story that we tell ourselves to explain reality. Right. And you're either living under your frame or you're living under an inherited frame, a borrowed frame, some frame that someone gave you. The frame is the story, the metaphor. And when I say the metaphor, what I mean is like some you've, you've heard these metaphors like life is a game, right? Or love is war, right? These metaphors, that is the frame that we're living in. So if I believe that love is war, I can expect battles. I can expect casualties. I can expect all sorts of things that come with my metaphor of war. So it's extremely important to have constructed your frame with intention as opposed to just living out what you've always lived out, you know. I, I'll say this, I've had a frame in the past where I would constantly be told by my parents, by teachers, by bosses that, oh, you've got so much potential. You should be doing so much more. You've got so much potential. You, you could be doing this, you could be doing that, you know, but here you are doing this, you should be doing so much more. And that was a frame that I accepted and I kept hearing it, it kept being repeated. Right. And it structured the foundation of my state. So I was allowed to behave like someone who felt like a failure, someone who felt like, wow, I'm so capable, but I can't seem to pull out of myself. I don't know how to be this thing that they see. You see all the two connect the frame and the state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how did you get yourself out of that? Because that's very similar to what I'm working on or working with right now. How did you change your frame? It got to the point with me where I, I I was tired of it. I didn't want to live like that. Anymore. Like I had experienced years of it and I, I just put my foot down. I said, no more. I didn't know any NLP at the time. I didn't know any stuff, you know, any tricks and tips. There was no YouTube back then. So I decided I had enough. And I mean, you know, I'm a creative person and I've always kind of had imaginary friends and whatnot. So for me, what really helped me get over this was I personified all of the negativity into an entity, right? That, that's what I say today. But back then, it was kind of like just my shadow, like this dark, oppressive force that was holding me down. So like, I, instead of identifying with it, I, was, I started to externalize it. And that shifted the frame for me. Because what would happen is when these negative thoughts came, when the depression came, when, when all these things showed up, it wasn't me. It was this entity, right? So it allowed me to, to fight it, to say, you know what? Even though that's what you're saying and that's what happened in the past, that's not the truth today. And I kept doing that. I kept doing that. And I think I distanced myself from that. And then I started to create a new story for myself. I started to define life how I wanted it to be. you know. And, and it, it did take some some inner work as far as just being in the dark and paying attention to myself, analyzing my behavior, right? Paying attention to myself and seeing, you know, maybe I'm doing some of this to myself. Maybe I should mm -hmm. stop doing this. Maybe I should do more of that over, over years, you know, until eventually we get to the point now where I, I create the metaphor for my life. 
I speak into the mirror and tell myself what life is. Uh, it doesn't matter what anybody says. I know what reality is. So anyone can say anything about it with all sorts of proof and evidence. But if it doesn't fit my frame, it will not change my state. That's pretty clear. Thank you. Hopefully you can't hear my dog snoring in the background. Good. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. I the exercise we did where okay, yeah. So we were talking about frames and stories. That one exercise where you did a drawing of the person, you were just kept going up and up as to okay, this is how I used okay, let's just say procrastination. You had one word and then you kind of build up on that. And then at the end, you're like, okay, nope, this is not how I see myself. This is how I see myself. Is that kind of what you're explaining here? Yeah, yeah. Of course, at the time, it was unrefined, just winging it. But I, no, it what, was we have, what we have here, this this is more of like a intentional, specific, guided way to, to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, There was another part I wanted to go... A little bit deeper on or maybe have specific examples is the chart you drew about um from physical to ethereal astral mental akash and then buddhi and you talk about male and female talk about cause and effect can we kind of dive into that a little bit sure that's a big pool to dive into what side are we diving in from um Good question. Just want to know how, because the physical is pretty much at the tail end of things. So if I want to change something in the physical, how do I backtrack? Like, do you have examples on how to go back to, that's where I'm at in the course. Maybe it'll become clearer to me as I keep going, but just wanted to see what input you have surrounding that chart. Yeah. Okay. So it it helps as far as like learning it for the first time to learn it from the end to the beginning and getting experiences. Um, I'll say this as a side note. What I've learned from occult studies is that there are words in books that you can easily read and memorize, but that doesn't mean you understand it. In order to understand things like Kabbalah and elemental magic and manifestation and all these different systems the way to understand it is you take those words and you fill them in with your experience so when i when i had this this the homework at the end of these courses that's what i'm asking you to do i have i'm asking you to look at the four nights right and get a definition of what they represent and then go out in your life and find those representations in your personal life you see what i'm saying because when you find those people and you connect them with the symbol now you have a true understanding of what the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, coming back to this, to your question, with the physical plane, the etheric plane, the astral plane, the mental plane, it's going to help to start with the physical plane because you have nothing but experiences with that. We can say that your etheric aspect is your imagination, right? That, that'd be the easiest thing to say, your imagination. But you said the astral, that's that's more like what happens when you're dreaming. That's going to be the actual, you know, when you when you daydream about something that you really enjoy and it's very pleasant, it actually stimulates emotions and feelings in your body. We can say that those emotions and feelings that are being stimulated are coming from the astral. So you can see just how we could say that the astral plane is the fuel and the battery for the etheric. And the etheric is the fuel and the battery for the physical, because nothing that is created here, nothing came without the process of being imagined first. And of course, behind those those feelings um, that you get from the astral plane, the the inspiration and the substance behind your dreams, the next level up would be the mental plane. And with the mental plane, we're dealing with concepts in their purest form right so before i can have a business selling donuts i have to dream and fantasize about this business of selling donuts i gotta see how my 
what color scheme is my store going to be? Um, what kind of donuts are we going to sell? Who are we helping with this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are my ads going to look like? You imagine all that. And while I'm imagining it, imagining it, I'm working myself up into a new state where I, where I believe that this is possible. And if I believe it's possible, I can allow myself to actually do it. Right. That's the astral plane. But before I can even do any of that, before I can even believe that it's possible, in the back of my mind, because the higher up these levels go, the more subconscious it is. So in the back of my mind, talking about the mental plane, I have to come into the awareness of a concept, of several concepts. Number one, it's possible for me to start a business. Number two, it's possible that people will like my donuts, right? These are pure thoughts, not opinions, right? The mental plane is filled with pure thoughts outside of the feelings of the astral plane. And of course, the spiritual plane is the, the space for all of this to occur. So the manifestation aspect of it is it, it kind of starts with me believing and believing in the option that I can have a donut store and that people will like my donuts and I'm capable of doing this and I have the resources or I can find the resources. All that stuff has to be within my frame. I have to believe all that. Then I have to feel motivated enough to actually take action on it. I got to dream it, visualize it, imagine it. And with all of that in my story, I'm going to make action to manifest this thing. Right? I'm going to start looking for spaces, locations, looking for loans or whatever I have to do. Is that a, is that a clear example of how that process is working? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just feel like using that same example, somebody like me, I would say I just have a lot of ideas. Some, I would get into that space where I just kind of imagine what I want, who is it for, and it'll just happen like super quickly as if I'm getting a download of exactly the whole pattern from beginning to end. And then there are certain ideas where I feel like it requ- I, I'm running into a lot more resistance. Oh, yeah. So those, yeah, those resistance is what I want to learn how to tweak because I know ultimately that I am everything. I'm capable of everything. So that's, the, that, that's where my resistance and blockages are coming from on certain ideas. Okay. Interesting. Because you, you mentioned that when you get that download, it's, it's from beginning to end, it's, it's a complete download. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you you said that some ideas, Mm -hmm. some ideas. Okay. Hell, I'd be willing to wager all. It's just that, you know, we might be more aware of certain aspects of them, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll say that on one side. And then on the other side, you said that you face resistance, right? You come up there, there's resistance that comes up. Mm-hmm. And what I want to illustrate is based off of what we were just talking about with these four planes. Dealing with that mental plane, the concept is complete. In the astral plane, the experience is complete. Now, when you get to the imagination plane, it's going to be filtered by your specific personality. But when you get to the physical plane, this is the plane of the elementals. This is where the resistance shows up because you're trying to bring something that doesn't exist into a plane that already exists, right? You're trying to squeeze something into a space that is telling you there's no room. And this kind of goes back to the spiritual authority. This resistance that you're feeling, this is the elements. And the elements, the whole reason I went into Prakriti, the feminine, and Purusha, the masculine, is because Prakriti is in motion. She's already doing her thing. It's already a complete cycle. So any effort to change that, it's going to take a certain quality of force. Not not a quantity, of course. Like it, it doesn't matter how much you do it or how long it takes you. Because I meant, yeah, I heard that you said sometimes these things manifest super quick, whereas other people it goes very slow. It's not about the quantity; it's the quality of the force. So what I mean is that if you're able to hold your frame of when you first got this download, right? This is why in that first module I talk about dwelling in the spirit, saturating yourself in it and staying there because you can hold that quality of spirit when you come back to the physical world to do that work. The resistance isn't that you're not supposed to do this or you can't do it. It's you have to mold reality to change. 
another example I gave is like going to the gym, right? Here you have your body. But when you set your mind to work out in your routine consistently, your physical matter starts to conform and change based on that intention, right? That's what's happening in, in every manifestation experience. We're forcing the material plane to conform to our, our, our unmanifest vision. So with all that being said, to get back to what you were, what you, what you brought up, the reason that I'm focusing more on the shadow work type exercises and I'm saying certain key things because I want to angle your attention towards to create this change has to do with your understanding of spirit. Not any tips and tricks, not summoning any creatures, nothing like that. It's all about your understanding and integration of your experience with spirit. Because once you get that in line, that resistance starts to melt faster and faster with every attempt. What if you had a frame where resistance wasn't even an option? That would be freaking awesome. You think that's possible for you? Absolutely. Definitely would need to train myself on it because I feel like just like in one of the videos you were talking about feeding the elements, giving them life, teaching them how to become stronger. And I feel like I, I've, I've allowed those resistance to, I, fe I fed them. <laughs> and now I'm trying to switch back and tell them who the boss is because they're here to, um, to serve me in a sense and support you exactly so i'm trying to revert that but again it just comes it comes with practice and time and like i said i'm patient and i'm open to doing what it takes to kind of get myself there like when you use the example of exercise five years ago that was me i wanted to would get on the We'll get on a week long of I'm like, boom, I'm motivated, I'm doing it. And then I kind of fall back. And then it was a constant thing. But now it's like, I don't even think about it. I know I'm supposed to exercise. It's, it doesn't even feel right when I don't do it. So I, I, want to, I want to have that same thing in other aspects of my life. And again, resistance is coming in those areas sometimes most most time than that but you're right i do believe that i can have a frame where resistance didn't exist and and, it, and it's true because it's not that nature is resisting us it's not that the elemental forces are resisting us it's more like what you said a few moments ago it's our duty to train them to behave and perform in the way that we want them to so if they're not performing did we do did we do our part in training the forces of elements to present to us what we wish for? Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. Um, in the next week, we're going to talk about my seven principles, and one of them is content versus context. And that is going to help with what you said about how this is what you did with exercise. At first, you know, it might have been a little bit of a struggle to get into the routine, but now you don't even think about it. In fact, it doesn't feel right if you don't do it, right? Because you have integrated your intention with your daily pattern and the forces of nature in your aura, in your life, in your environment, they have conformed to your pattern and they support you. They support you so much that when you don't follow this pattern, they start to say, hey, well, what's going on? We didn't exercise today. Like, this is uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. The elemental forces, they, they feed on the energy and the directive that we give them and they get locked into pattern. That's really what this resistance is. We're trying to change patterns. So when I talk about content versus context, the, the content may change, but the context is what we want to pay attention to. A quick example, um, the content of sports, right? If it's basketball, you got the ball. These guys are going from one end of the court to the next, throwing it into the hoop. Football, they're throwing the ball. They're going from one side of the 
the field to the next side, right? Touchdown. Golf, right? They're swinging the golf club and trying to get the ball to the hole. The content is different, right? Different sports. But the context, you'll see there's a similarity, is there not? Absolutely. It's always a ball. We're always trying to get it from one pinpoint to the other. And it's always about who's going to get it first. So in this situation, with you disciplining yourself to go to the gym to exercise and work out, the content is different there, but the context is the same with what you're trying to do now or what you will ever try to do when it comes to uh, manipulating your existence, your environment, your patterns. Mm -hmm. So, So if you can locate and pinpoint the details of the process of you being successful, you can translate that to whatever else you're trying to do. Do you get what I'm saying? I do. In fact, being able to accomplish or get to a point where exercising is natural is proof for me to know that, hey, if I can do it here, I could do it here as well. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Trav, that resistance be coming through like, and I'm like, and I, I'm I'm past that stage where I'm blaming others. Like I'm blaming, oh, this is how I was brought up. Da, da, da. At the end of the day, I have to choose which direction I'm going. Not necessarily say, oh, okay, this ran in your family. So oh. it's just. Oh, well, time out right there. Yeah. Is, is that a story? Is that a metaphor? Is that a frame? That is, and I need to get out of that frame because it's not real. That's not who I am at the core. True, indeed. That is a frame. So I need to watch my frames. Do you have an exercise for that? And if it's already on the course, don't worry about it. I'll get to it. Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. Um, can we talk a little bit more about patterns? Before we do that, let's take a pause here. I wanted to also say, um, when I when you start breaking down the different elements and I'm looking at my life, I'm reflecting on my patterns per se. I can now easily recognize, oh, okay, this is this element trying to feed off of me. Not only for me, but people who are close to me, I could hear them and like, oh, okay, this is the type of element that you're dealing with, which I think it's like insanely powerful and amazing that you put that, you know, like you put the course together. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about patterns. I want to get a better understanding because I know it plays a lot into what we're doing. I am the course I I kind of I mean the the section I was on today was about matter replicating being a replicating machine. I don't know how you said that. Pattern replicating machine. Yeah, pattern replicating machine. Um, and you kind of broke down from the soul, higher self, ego, da da da. Can you kind of go over that a little bit more, please? Or just maybe repeat yourself? Sure. Um I'll ask this first. How how is the answer that I'm going to give you useful and appropriate to you? It would help me solidify what I think you're trying to say in that message, A, and then B, when I hear someone else say something, I learn differently, okay? I have different ways of learning, but sometimes when you explain it, it just kind of like locks in to my memory. Okay. Okay. So ultimately, we, we've got two forces that we're dealing with. Right, this masculine and feminine, the two forces that we're dealing with are consciousness and energy. 
And of course, when we combine those two and we zoom in, we'll see many more parts start to develop. But this is what the ancients called the illusion. But there's ultimately two, there's ultimately one. But as far as our human experience is concerned, it's very difficult for us to go past that two. Um, so with consciousness, what we're dealing with is the limitless potential of any and everything that can be imagined and will never be imagined by minds like ours. So like if you, if you can just think of that as this abstract idea of the potential of things, this is the potential of things. On the other side is the total opposite. We've got limited, lifeless, we've got dense, we've got form. So on one hand, with consciousness, things are free flowing. It, nothing is really anything. It's, it's just pure potential. On the other hand, everything is something. So the way that the relationship between these two work is that the matter energy, which becomes matter, or you know, energy is everything that we can feel, taste, touch, smell, etc. It doesn't create on its own. That's not even what it's for. It can only receive from the potential of the other side. So it has no choice but to rely on instructions and directive from that other side. And as these instructions and directives are received, it starts to create patterns, it starts to create patterns. And those patterns start to create more patterns. Because here's the thing, energy, its job is to reflect. Its job is to reflect. So it takes that reflection process and reflects within itself and then reflects within itself and reflects within itself. So much so that we have what we have now, walking around in bodies, you know, with presidents and countries and relationships, all this, this, and this is why magic works because we can see the reflection in all of our experiences. I just talked about the masculine, which is consciousness and the feminine, which is energy. And we see that within our physical bodies of all the creatures that live here. The, the male aspect of, of any species gives to the female and the female takes that and develops and creates something, nurtures it into existence. And the process repeats. So this is important to understand because when you're when you're ultimately trying to figure out what's the point, who am I, where are we going, right? That's that's the core central questions. This all this information is important because you can start to see that oh, if nature is a pattern replicating machine then anything that I can see here manifested, that's not consciousness. That's a reflection of consciousness. I want to see what consciousness is. So you go through life identifying all the different patterns and reflections, just like in the Bible in Genesis when Adam was naming all the animals. We have to be within our lives and name all these patterns that are happening. Oh, I see what's going on here. This is happening because... You know, I had an issue with my mother. Oh, because I had an issue with my father. This is why I'm reflecting that pattern. So we can start to see, oh, all these things are just reflections of other things. None of this is, is me. None of this defines me. And you take that external process and you go within. Now you're looking at your thoughts. Now you're looking at your feelings, your dreams. Oh, I'm attached to this concept because, right? It's a reflection of whatever, whatever, whatever. And eventually you get to the point where you realize everything in my life is a reflection of a reflection of a reflection. Nothing here is me. So I must be something. I must, I must, the, my, the nature of what I am must be different from this. In fact, the nature of what I am is what gave the first reflection in the first place. So that aspect is, is what the ancients call buddhi or what they call that higher self, that higher mind, that spiritual authority that's where the spiritual authority comes from that higher aspect that gives the reflection everything else up under that is a reflection of, of something else thank I mean, you for that okay yeah i want to go too far 
No, keep going. <laughs> Please keep going. Technically, that buddhi aspect is also a reflection of a higher version of it. And like I said, we keep going because remember I said the highest that our minds can go is the two, the masculine and the feminine. But there's even that is a reflection of the one. Um, do you do you know much or do you know much about the tree of life, Kabbalah? Um no. Okay. Let's well, know the Kabbalah, base. Hmm? So it, it's it's basically it, it they have a diagram for this whole process. And the deeper you study this diagram, the more that you can kind of fill in the blanks and see what's going on. Well, at the top of this diagram, we have the two, the masculine and the feminine, but they come out of this one aspect. Within that one aspect was the potential for consciousness and matter. And then even that reflects up to a point that basically our, our minds can't go. But we can kind of guess what's happening up there. Anyways, the whole the whole thing about that, what's what's important about that is a using that process of identifying these reflections and patterns, you can see what you are and what you're not. And B, what that does is that helps you to understand why magic works. Because you're 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 shifting what's being reflected in these mirrors. You're shifting what's being reflected in nature and prakriti. You're pulling levers and pressing buttons. To get the reflection that you want. And I'm doing that by changing my frame or giving another metaphor to my story. Yes. And here's why. The higher up levels that you operate in, mm -hmm. the more control you have, the easier it is. If you, if you try to do this on the lower plane, you're going to face massive resistance. Mm -hmm. But when you can do this at the highest plane... The gears up there are easier to turn. And it, it's almost like if you can see this diagram in your head, like little small gears attached to bigger gears, attached to bigger gears, right? And if you just turn the small ones, the bigger ones turn to. That's what it's like when you're working in the planes of the mind, emotions. That's why shadow work is so powerful. That's why maintaining your frame and, and being aware of the, the metaphor that you're using for your life, that's why these things are so important. Like I said in the beginning, your state allows you to behave in a certain way. I, I said that specifically, it allows you. There's stuff you can't do when you're feeling depressed. And there are certain things you can't do when you're feeling super happy. That, um, that I know 100%, which is why I'm teaching myself to somehow be more delusional and selfish in a sense because it's working for me hey if it brings your results <laughs> it don't matter what anybody else says right right um travis where can i write a review about the course oh my um well i'll have a question for you where, where are we at with time we're 240 yeah um okay. You could write a review in the feed, and I could use that um, on the, the class website. Um, what I wanted to ask you was, I've, I'm really enjoying this conversation, and you ask really great questions. Would you mind, or would you have any objection, if perhaps I used some of this on my YouTube channel? Because I think that it would help some people. And I think it might inspire some people to get the course. Um, like, would my face be showing? There's another resistance of mine. Listen, I'll, I'll take the video off. It'll just be audio if that's what you want. Audio, go for it. Okay. I don't think you, you, you didn't really say anything like personal or revealing, but I think that this was a good session. And I, I do think that it would help people. Good. I feel like that's what your course have done. Sometimes when I watch it on YouTube, you'll kind of get to the to the juicy part and then you allow Q&A. And I'm like, I need to come back to listen to those Q&As because they're all helping me understand better. So, yeah, you um, have my permission to use my audio for that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And then going back to the feed for the review, um, 
just go into the course and find the feed or just put it in my comments? What do you mean by the feed? Okay, so um, when you log into the course, you know, like across the top, there, there should be like a, a, a feed page. And there's also where you got the class itself. And then there's like, we have the chat. Did you see, see those it. different options? Yep, I see the feed at the top. There should be a feed specifically for this class. Um, if you post it there, I'll be able to uh, screenshot it and add it to my the, the, the website page. Okay, I'll navigate myself through this. I would like to finish the course. I'm just so... I took this course way serious, more seriously than I did college, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even finish wow. college because this is college for life this is how you are going to be able to navigate through life um i don't want to say better i want to say something better than better can you think of any word better than better intentionally um precisely more refined yes so this this is amazing i bought this class as a birthday gift to myself and it's worth every penny. Wow. That makes me very happy to hear. Good. I don't know if you ran into any resistance before doing all of this or even Absolutely. putting yourself out <laughs> or even putting yourself out there, but I was probably one of those on the other side telling you go for it cuz it's very much needed. Wow. Yeah, it 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 this stuff, it happens to me too, right? And I, I'm i wise enough to know that being able to work with these inner planes of the self, that doesn't mean that, it, just like what the, what the Christians say when I used to go to church, just because you're saved doesn't mean that situations in life don't happen or you don't go through bad things. That are about. It means that you know how to deal with them properly. Mm -hmm. And even in making this course, you know, this is why I always ask feedback because I need to hear what your experience is. Because when it's just me, I'm thinking to myself, is this enough? Is this clear? Does this sound ridiculous? Am I being too mean? Am I being too nice? Like, you know, I ask all these questions, but at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, listen, this is coming from a higher plane. All that mm -hmm. stuff that you're asking, don't worry about it. You've been right. given a vision. You've acted on the vision. Trust it and keep it moving. So exactly. to hear your feedback, is, it helps. It helps. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything you put on here... Maybe I was the cause or anybody else who's benefiting from it. And this is just the effect. So thank you. I would finish the course, put my reviews on there. Maybe I'll put a review because I just, like I said, I'm so, I'm really um, pleased with what I'm learning so far. So I do one and then do another one when I'm done. Um, our next schedule, our next session is scheduled on the 18th of October, same time. Anything okay. you would like me to prepare or do prior to? Yes. Um, tell me about your meditation life. I am an avid meditator. Um, I've gotten to a point where I walk, meditate, I sit, meditate. I'm standing online meditating. So when you mention saturated, I have it on my board at my mirror, which you can't see in my background, but... When you say saturate yourself with spirit, I have been doing that, but I'm like, how come I've never thought of it that way? Like, that's my true essence. So to answer your question, um, minimum sitting down quiet early in the morning when I wake up and then before I fall asleep, I meditate and I squeeze those little meditations in between. So that's the point, right? Because, they, you know, I deal with a lot of different people from different angles. Some people are just getting into it. And some people are like you. They've got a full schedule set out. You're cutting so, out. I didn't hear that part. I was saying that, um, yeah, because I deal with a lot of different people. Some are just now trying to figure out what meditation is. And then you're on the other extreme of people who already have a routine setup. Um, I would say really 
intentionally try to spend time with that highest aspect of self. We we talked about, you know, this, the buddhi, the higher intelligence, the one that's giving the reflections. Stress your, stretch yourself to see if you can connect with that and reside there. Like try your best to go as high as you can outside of these reflections and just listen. And this is what this is why spiritual authority is so important. I mentioned that Purusha is all of potential. It contains ev- everything, right? Unmanifested. And it's it's not so much like you're trying to raise up to God and ask God questions. Simply being in that presence, you're going to receive the right information just by being there. So stretch yourself and try to go up as high as you can. I don't know why people try to meditate and dwell on their day and what they did all day and yesterday. I mean, I, I get that, but that's that's already said and done. Yeah. Go as high as you can. It's practice, though. It's just, you don't know what you're doing. But then when you hit that, when you locked in with spirit, you're like, I'm here. Like you just yeah. know you're here and you feel so blissful that sometimes I feel like I'm going to levitate i need to ground myself because i'm like is this normal that i'm feeling this happy for no well i guess there is a reason but just some this is my first time actually voicing that to somebody else like nobody knows that i'm sitting here high off spirit (laughs) randomly (laughs) random but i know that you would understand what i'm saying and it's so beautiful that sometimes i don't even initiate that come sit with me, I'm summoned, I'm called, I'm just called to just meditate. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can't even, exp- I've never in my life explained this to somebody, but I know you would understand. I see, this is the five C's, like you're already doing this, consume, comprehend, uh-huh. right? Building up that confidence. The next step is to start to command, right? You start taking in this information, these downloads, because like I said, these downloads, they're not just, you know, to, to make some money and to do this at a third. These downloads are to create heaven on earth, to manifest your what you're supposed to be manifesting. Mm-hmm. Start speaking this stuff. Start speaking this stuff with more authority than whatever the hell they're talking about on the news. Mm. Thank you. I know since I started the class, I would feel that bliss, that completely i'm there right and i'm just like okay start throwing in stuff that where you feel resistance but i let me know if you experience this or if you understand what i'm saying sometimes it feels so good that you have no need you don't need to even ask anything because you already know you you already got everything absolutely absolutely all right (laughs) And, and and listen i don't know if that was in response to what i said or just in general but I didn't say ask for nothing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I says speak, speak what you've received. Yeah. We're not asking or begging. There's no more, no more of that. Yes. Thank you for for actually adding that into it. Cause again, it just clicked. Okay, this is what you meant. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're over our time. Thank you for giving me what six extra minutes. <laughs> so good. I appreciate it. I am looking forward to our next session and I will um, work on commanding when I'm there. But this is such an amazing um, feeling to saturate yourself in spirit. This It just feels normal. It feels natural. And that's walking in your power. That is walking in your power. I love it. Thank you so much, Travis. Thank you. This has been a great conversation. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to our next session. Me too. Peace. All right, peace.